I mentioned a couple of times earlier about uh, biomass uh, relates to the amount of energy that an organism contains. And therefore, we need to consider ecological efficiency when thinking about a food chain. Ecological efficiency refers to efficiency in which biomass or energy is transferred from one trophic level to the next, and we often consider this in percentage. So keeping in mind uh, in a food chain, we say the producers get eaten by uh, primary consumers, then the primary consumers get eaten by secondary, secondary gets eaten by tertiary, etc. Uh, however, uh, we need to consider how much of the energy or the mass of the producers actually got eaten and used as useful energy in this uh, primary consumer. And we know as a fact that it is never going to be 100%. And in fact, it's never high. Usually would be about 10% or 20%. It depends on what food has been eaten and by what tro at what trophic levels. So when we consider the efficiency or calculating it, we need to think about why the energy is lost. And actually, they love asking this sort of question in exam as well. So in the case of from producers to primary consumers, um, think about the fact that not all of the lights actually used in photosynthesis. Some of them will be reflected. And actually, there is only about 10% of the light used in photosynthesis, so there is a massive loss of energy there. Also considering the fact that there will be other factors affecting the rate of photosynthesis, for example, water availability, or the fact that even some of the energy is being used up within photosynthesis in order for the reaction to occur. Uh, in a lot of questions, uh, they will often like to ask you about how energy is lost from one consumer level to another. And that's quite a frequent question, especially applied in f uh, farming questions about how can farmers increase the energy loss. And usually it's always about those few things. Uh, when considering these questions, even if you can't remember, it's important to be able to use the knowledge that you have about living organisms and think about um, what types of energy can be lost within this case. So think about this, uh, all living organisms do respiration to release energy for their own functioning. Now this is good, however, uh, some of the energy is lost as thermal energy, it's just plain body heat. So that is where energy can be lost. And the thing is, animals will uh, excrete, okay, they will uh, pee or poop. So therefore, uh, again, energy lost through excretion meaning that some of the food that you ate was actually lost directly. You didn't absorb all of it in, in that sense. The same concept when you're eating, uh, you're not going to eat all of it because some parts of it cannot be eaten. So imagine that you just had a big feast with some roast chicken and some vegetables and you will use some of the carbohydrates, lipids and the proteins from uh, the food to do respiration, to build your body muscles and uh, to allow daily functioning. Some of the energy will be lost through your body heat because you've just had a meal, it gets, it gets quite warm. And after 24 hours or, some, or so, you will need to uh, the toilet. And again, some of parts of the chicken and the vegetable will be pooped up. And especially thinking about fibers within vegetables cannot be digested by the human body. So therefore, you would have to excrete them. Again, that is energy loss because you didn't use it to build your body mass. And finally, thinking about uh, the roast chicken, you can't actually eat the bones at all. So therefore, some parts of the food is not eaten, meaning that considering the whole organism, one of the trophic levels is not all completely eaten and digested and absorbed by the second trophic level organism. So think about, if you're not sure, think about eating a chicken and some vegetables, what happens to you afterwards, and that should help you explain and remember what you need to say. And just keeping in mind, uh, always think about, okay, what counts as useful energy, right? Useful energy refers to all the energy used to build the body, shall we say, build your biomass. And that's the way we consider it to be useful. Therefore, this is why uh, I say that you can often correlate biomass to energy content. We would need to be able to say what methods we use to reduce the energy loss, or shall we say, maximize the ecological efficiency or energy transfer efficiency. And it's a classic three, four marker question. Having a thought about this one, on that reflected, unfortunately, there's nothing much we can do about it. So you can make sure, for example, in a greenhouse, you can ensure that the crops are at temperature, they're at a good soil pH, have enough water and carbon dioxide to decrease my photosynthesis rate. And in farm animals, usually, uh, you can make sure that the animals are kept indoors, so they're not outside, meaning that they would have to do more respiration to release more body heat to keep themselves warm. But if they're staying indoors, they would do less respiration, therefore more energy is used to build biomass. 
excretion, well, again, that's not something that you can um, actually decrease, but you can make sure that the food they eat has high energy content within it, so they absorb as much as they possibly can rather than eating low energy content and excreting just as much. Some parts of food not eaten, again, making sure that giving them food that they can eat entirely rather than having to leave stuff behind. Another thing to think about, which is not listed here, would be that farm animals can get ill. So um, if they get ill, they will mean that they would have to use some energy to feel their immune system to defeat that pathogen, which means less energy used to build biomass. So therefore, one way around it is to vaccinate all of them to prevent them from getting sick in the first place. Uh, some places use antibiotics, but obviously it's a bad idea because it contributes to antibiotic resistance. And also some farm animals can move around. In fact, they're moving too much, they will use up too much energy uh, to allow them to move around. So therefore, in order for them to dedicate more energy to build biomass, you can limit their movement. So another method is to do genetic engineering or selective breeding, meaning your uh, most of your cohort of farm animals are strong enough to withstand pathogens so they don't get sick that often. And actually they grow quite quickly, meaning you can use uh, feed them less food and yet they're still growing as quickly as, as the other animals. So in general speaking, you're saving the energy transferred. And so that's it. So we've talked about trophic levels, the different stages in the food chain, biomass being the mass of living material uh, without the water content, and uh, how we correlate that to uh, energy within a particular trophic levels. Also thinking about what energy can be lost and how we can maximize the efficiency of energy transfer.